Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando. That's Corey. And today we're doing 1993's The Program. Yeah, baby! Starting defense! In, in honor of the Super Bowl, which has already been played, we figured we'd come out and do an, an ode to football, um, an ode to the Super Bowl since the season's over. And some people need more football in their life. So we figured, what the hell, we'll do the program. Uh, it was a re another request, so we figured this was the perfect time to do it. So Yes. With that being said, let's jump in. Um, and before we jump in, uh, if you want to reach out to me or Corey on Twitter, you can reach out to me at Junior D's. You can reach out to Corey at Idle Poncho. And let's get into the cast and crew. The program stars... James Kahn as Coach Sam Winters, Halle Berry as Autumn Haley, Omar Epps as Darnell Jefferson, Craig Sheffer as Joe Kane, and Christy Swanson as Camille Schaefer. The writer-director, David Ward, wanted said that in an interview in like 2018 for ESPN, said that he wanted to do a, a movie that was an ode to football and kind of it, it shot football well because no movie before had really done that and he did he sure. pulled all of these stories from a bunch of different places so joe kane the quarterback in this movie is loosely based on a character or a, a quarterback from penn state who had a mm -hmm. drinking problem family had a drinking problem apparently alvin mack was based on a linebacker from florida state bobby collins was based on a quarterback uh, from Colorado State, who was banging his coach's daughter. And... Dude, Alvin Mack, I just got to stop you. Alvin Mack, based on somebody or not, dude, that is one of the most pseudo-racist characters in a yes. movie ever. Fucker yes. can't read, doesn't yep. care about education. He lives in like a 1920s like Mississippi crop-sharing fucking house. <clears throat> that whole character just drives me insane. <sighs> Like the rest of this movie, um, while some of it is based in truth, yes, there's there's a lot of it that is um, overblown for yes. the purpose of the movie, sure, uh, including this. Like it couldn't be that you know he he basically has an eighth grade education or hell a ninth grade education. They could they're like no, he reads at a second grade level and. Like, you basically made him a complete and utter idiot in this movie. Yeah, exactly. Um, and not not even that he was uh, from a, a poorer background. You made him dirt poor. Like, yes. Th like, that. There's there was a few things in there I was just like, nah. Looking back now, I'm like, I would have changed a couple of things. Yeah, there's just, you, you piled up one too many stereotypes, especially yes. considering you also had Omar Epps, who had to take placement courses and be tutored as well. Yes, exactly. You know what I mean? Just, it's exactly. a little much. Yeah, no. So, and then the the last one, Latimer, who is one of the, the other main characters in this, the, the Royd head. And when you think football and you think college football, you basically think of Latimer. Like, that's... Oh, his entire <laughs> arc through this movie is, yes. yeah. And that character was also based on somebody who played at South Carolina who was uh, got busted for roids and uh, the whole head smashing scene that we'll get mm. to when he makes the starting lineup. That's a true story that the director took from um, a sports illustrated article. He had read about this dude. So Jesus. this was, this was just bits and pieces from a bunch of different programs, which is why you, you see so many athletes today. Mm. talk about this movie and hold this movie up as one of the best football movies because it's based in so much reality yes. and it's, it's so true to life. So without further ado, we'll get, we'll bust into this and we'll break this thing down. But the opening is that they're playing in a monsoon. It's the last game of the season. If they win, they go to a bowl game and Joe Kane throws an, uh, an incomplete pass and they lose. And this is when the pressure starts. We need to talk about the fact that they're playing their final game of the season in a fucking hurricane. 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. Joe Kane is basically drowned in the opening scene. I think the rest of the movie is just him going out. Like he's drowning <laughs> in this fucking massive lake that yes. the back tackled him into. And he's just like seeing what could have been his future. And he was going to get his life right. And I mean, yeah. who didn't think in 1993 they were going to get a date Christy Swanson at some time? <laughs> the coach is getting pressure from the media, the alumni, the school's chancellor to put together a winning team for next season. And we've seen movies like this before where it's like, all right, now we're just going to let everything slide and everything's cool. And Jeez. but it, but it's it's a good it's a good glimpse because it's not it's a it's a couple minutes. It's a good glimpse yeah. into what coaches actually go through. You know, yes. this he's in the office with the chancellor and he's like, listen, I've been here for 12 years. And all of a sudden you're telling me now that like I, I could be fired if I have another bad season. Like, what the hell? And then you got the media on your back. You know, you got the alumni who that which is a big thing in college football. and that's the pressure of being the head coach and now you got to go on the recruiting trail and talk to people you don't know and go hey yes. that that 108 yard kick return you had against uh small valley high school that was the best thing i've ever seen in my entire life bitch you never seen that kick return like no i mean this was this was basically all recycled in blue chips with yes. nolte yes and his recruiting scenes it's just whether or not it's true to life, it has become such a thing where it's just so cliched. You know, he's walking into the kid's apartment building. And, what was that high school again? Oh, Taft, yeah. But let me tell you, that was the greatest thing I've ever seen against Taft. Like, yeah, I get it. There's a lot of bullshit going on, and you're telling them what they're going to be, and yada, yada. Not every ball coach is a fucking it's, asshole. No, not every ball coach. And James but, Con is and then, a, I mean, James Conn is a piece of shit in this movie. Let's yes. be clear. Oh yeah, he is in for one thing, and that's Jimmy Conn. And if you're worth covering up for, you're good. If you're exactly, ain't, fuck you, buddy. Well, and at the time in '93 when this came out, this wasn't cliched. Mm -hmm. This was this was like groundbreaking stuff. Now in 2021, looking yeah, back at it, it, yeah, we've seen it so many times. But it does a really good job um, from the coach with the chancellor to the recruiting trail setting up all of the characters because yes. then from there it goes to Alvin in his, you know, shanty home with his mom promising her a house when he makes it to the pros. Uh, it cuts to Joe dealing with his drunk dad and family. And, you know, his dad's like, ah, I thought you're going to make it to the bowl game. Didn't think you'd be here for Christmas this year. You fucking loser. Merry fucking Christmas. Yeah, Merry fucking Christmas. Now, this was the one cliche I actually liked, was they just made his dad a complete fucking drunk. It wasn't yes. like he's trying to sell it Joe's was, likeness and he's trying to do this scheme yeah. with him. And let me so introduce you to this car dealer. Yeah. It was just like, eh, I'm just not that into you because I'm just not that into life. Sorry, exactly. son. I just don't care about you. Exactly. I don't really care about anything at this point. Yep. So... They did they did do a good job. They didn't make him a movie drunk. They no. they made him a real life drunk. After this, it then shows the second phase of the recruiting where they roll out the red carpet for these guys that come and visit the university. Mm -hmm. And they got the cheerleaders and the music and the, you know, they take him to the stadium and they let him they announce it over the, you know, the loudspeakers. They get a hot chick to walk you around campus, which is where we get introduced to Halle Berry. Uh, Dude, and, we have got to break down Halle Berry's character because one, I'm pretty sure her daddy or that team and or the alumni and or all of them together are pimping her out to new recruits. Um, from the scenes that we see of her father, I don't think like I think he knows, but he's um, he doesn't want to know. He's willfully ignorant. Plausible <laughs> the, deniability. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because her dad did play there, did go to school there. He is a uh, booster for the program. Yep. And but when she says like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take the new recruits around and show. Well, he's like, oh, cool. Yeah. Like, I remember getting recruited back in the day and they didn't do anything out of the ordinary. <laughs> no, nary a hand job to be seen. <laughs> 
it cuts from here to them hanging out at the bar. And this sets up all the characters. You got the Royd guy, the guy who can't read, the incoming freshman, the the smart ass lineman, the pretty boy quarterback, and then the backup for some reason. Now, in setting this up, and I understand it's the movies. So you have to have the main characters from this movie all hanging out together. But in real life, that's not how it works. First of all, the quarterbacks, if he's going to hang out with the linemen, it's going to be all of them, not just one. (laughs) Who I think plays his right tackle. Right tackle. In this game. So I don't think he's... (laughs) As far as the line goes, that's not the focus. Yes, exactly. So... It's typically, you know, your offensive guys hang out together, your defensive guys hang out together, and then the kicker and punter go play with themselves alone. I'm willing to overlook it now. This then moves into uh, Darnell seeing Autumn. He's up her ass immediately. A little aggressive by today's Look. standards. He's actually, though, not bad from the standpoint that it does. he's not just trying to, like, fuck her. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. He, he seems like he is actually genuinely into her, and he's got the naivety of an 18-year-old. Yes. It's, so to that, I'll give a... I, I hate to use the word aggressive, because that's yeah. such a fucking well, it, douchey word, but... <laughs> naive? Na, na, yeah. naive? Naive and aggressive. <laughs> with naive all, with and all. aggressive. They go hand in hand often. <laughs> they, they do. She reveals that she's dating the starting running back for the football team. At the moment, the two running backs are eye to eye and they don't like each other. Well, and Hallie unpacks like the whole backstory here. Yeah. And this is I'll give you a quick PSA. And this is why I also give Omar a little bit of pass here. Hi, kids. Uncle Corey. Anytime the girl you like has a boyfriend, but is telling you all the dirty shit he did after about, I don't know, five minutes of knowing you there's a good chance she's not that into him. Yes. So play it cool. Don't be don't be crazy aggressive. Play it cool. But you definitely keep that shit knowing that you're into her because she's looking for an excuse to dump this motherfucker. Yeah, I do know. It cuts to like him having lunch. And I like these little side scenes where he's, Darnell's having lunch with Alvin and Latimer. And mm-hmm. they're telling him how the program, quote unquote, helps its players from you know all the way from giving them tests ahead of time because you know alvin can't read fuck you dope boy i can read see that shoe says adidas you know just keeping the doing whatever it takes to keep them eligible to play because that's all they give a shit about they don't care if you graduate they don't care what they just want to keep you eligible to play dude omar epps character's name in this movie should have been naivety jones (laughs) because <laughs> it's just it's like he doesn't get shit that's yes. happening like do you not understand football yeah at that level like have you never watched did they not show that in the orphanage they because <laughs> what are you talking about the they made him from the streets but didn't make him very street smart no you know what i mean like oh, that yeah, even when the, when the guy gives him the envelope he immediately digs in his pocket and takes the envelope out and starts looking around like dude anytime somebody hands you an envelope (laughs) keep that shit down 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 low until you can walk to a private place preferably the bathroom stall is where you open those things and i like when alvin uh, takes it from him and he's like let me take this from you let me hold this way till you see light that's a goddamn friend right there because he's teaching you life lessons exactly when um jefferson gets the envelope and he goes to Mac and he's like, you know, what the hell? This guy just gave me this envelope with 50 bucks in it. First off, 50 bucks, even in 1993. Fuck you, you cheap bitch. Yeah, exactly. How'd you get into this party in the first place with a $50 Wait, did, fucking bill in your envelope? Did the, did the booster own an ice cream shop? Like, come on. Right? You, come you, on. You could do better. I'm a $500 I, minimum tailback, bitch. Dude, I, I, can't give, I, give better, I give better birthday presents. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Alvin Mack for this like angry, illiterate jock is one of the most likable characters oh, he's fantastic. in this movie. I loved him when I watched it the first time and I love him to yeah. this day. That's why My when they did him the movie. when they did him so dirty at the end, I was pissed. 
but we'll get to yep. that. It then goes to, you know, Joe meeting the marketing people for the college for him running for the, the Heisman trophy or being in the running oh. and the pressure that comes along with that. Cause like all the, the one thing, the one, you know, theme about this is the pressure that's on 18, 19, 20 year old kids. And I mean, they're, they're grown men, but, but kids mentally, they're all still. Kids. Yeah, I was say, they look like grown men. Yes. There's but, a big difference. <clears throat> But the the pressure that gets put on these guys at 18, you're starting at 18 years old, like, well, you're going to win the Heisman and you can say this and you can't say this. And you're just sitting back like, dude, I just want to play the game, which is like Joe's whole thing here. Do you really think this is worth it? I mean, I can barely handle the pressure of our YouTube commenters. <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck, they want us to do this movie now? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How long is the list? <laughs> you want me to win a Heisman? What? Yes. Get the fuck out of here. This is Ex crazy, the shit that we put these kids through. I mean, you try to block it out, but it's basically impossible. But it cuts to practice now. And they're, they're practicing in the preseason, getting ready for the season. And this, I will say, James Kahn is fantastic here. Getting in the face of their player, quit hugging wind, you get your helmet and you put it in here. Which, yep. by the way, that's not how you tackle anymore, because concussions. But then he goes over to uh, Omar, who's on the ground. He's hurt. And this is one of the best lines in the movie. Are you injured or are you hurt? Because there is a difference. And this is where Omar starts to get the business side of this. Like, okay, if you're yeah. injured, you can't play. If you're hurt, get the fuck up and get back in the huddle, stupid. Right. And by the way, and this is when he gives him the football. And he's like, and by the way. You're carrying this around campus. Anybody else brings it to me? Anybody but you. You turn this ball to me. You wish you were never born. And they do a great job bringing that back around much later than I thought they you, did. I thought you, that was about five minutes after that scene. They me bring that too. back in late. And it's me awesome. Me too. It is awesome where they brought it back. That it was yes. so late. It was like halfway through the season. Yeah, like, <laughs> I totally forgot about the whole thing. So Motherfuckers I. had 52 carries, hasn't fumbled once. You still got him doing this shit? Yeah. Joe meets Camille, which could you have given her a worse name in this? Camille? There's not much character there. Outside no. of her saying the word Joe, <laughs> question mark. You know, not everybody who plays tennis grew up in a country club, Joe. I don't know how you scare me, Joe. What's going on, Joe? <sighs> Joe, why are you thinking like this? It's an, it's an obscene amount of time she says Joe, <laughs> followed by question mark. Joe? Joe! Joe! Joe, you are right? What's wrong, Joe? It'd still be Joe. They build her up so great to start. Like, her introduction. Mm -hmm. You know, she's, a, she's an athlete. She has the whole thing where she shows him up on the tennis court, talking yep. shit to him. Yep. The whole thing is great. She's strong, independent. She doesn't buy into the football bullshit that everybody, literally everybody else does. Yeah. And then they just relegate her to, I'm a girlfriend in a sharp blazer. Yeah. She takes, she, she goes out on a date with him. They play tennis. And then he's like, well, now you got to go out with me and do something that you're not used to doing because she whoops his ass. Right. And he... He takes her on a goddamn motorcycle and is jumping shit and goes to like a quarry and almost kills her because he's got a fucking death wish. And it goes, she goes from it. it it's literally, it happens all in this scene because yeah. right when she, right when he picks her up, she's like, Hey, no cowboy shit. No, you know, don't be an asshole here. Yada, yada to at the end of this scene, when they're in the quarry, she gets pissed, takes off the helmet. And she's like, you almost killed us. And Jesus Christ, it goes through this whole thing. And then it's like, oh, you want to go for a drink? Sure, because I guess I'm your girlfriend now. And it goes from she's like the, the strong-willed, strong-minded woman to now I'm just like your arm candy for the rest of the fucking movie. Like, yeah, and I'm this, just this and I'm trying to save Joe. What's wrong, Joe? She's like, take it slow. Cool, I'll do your little game here on your motorcycle. Yes. Yes. Take it fucking slow. And he's like, oh, awesome. I'm going to take you to a rock quarry, which is, by the way, 
the best rape location I guess you can find? <laughs> I guess. What the fuck is wrong with like, you taking a on Prince, a first date? Listen, Prince didn't even take Apollonia to a rock quarry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking nuts. Yes. I That's did like here. Right. Because after this, what I really did like, and they do this a couple of times very subtly throughout the movie. I like the dichotomy between dumb athlete, smart athlete. So yes. there's a there's a few great scenes strung together here with Alvin Mack, with him because they all do their tutoring all at the same time. Speaking yeah. of which, Halle Berry's the tutor here, and Omar Epps gets her to be his tutor. Listen, I went to college. Okay. I was there for four years. First of all, I never met a tutor. Like, I didn't know anybody on campus that's a tutor. In all these movies, everybody's a goddamn tutor. And not only that, they're all the hottest men and women on the planet that are the tutors. Apparently, well, except for Alvin's tutor. Yeah, yeah, Alvin's tutor. Alvin's, <laughs> Alvin's tutor looked like he was hip to buy uh, stock in Apple before anybody else. He bought he bought that GameStop stock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. He's the guy that started the Reddit thread. So it goes from Alvin with his uh, tutor here. Which two city states fought in the Punic Wars? I don't know. Detroit and Buffalo. I what don't the, know that. What class are you taking? You know how much shit I know, and I don't know that. Dude, Omar's yeah, taken. Omar's taken survey of history and math zero. What the fuck? Alvin's in advanced fucking histrionics. <laughs> right? And then it cuts yeah. to the film study. Him getting peppered with questions by the coach. Okay, when you see this offense... Okie okay, Thunder Lion. What's your assignment? Kill the quarterback. Hit the tight end so hard his girlfriend dies. It shows the good... like Because everybody looks at football, and we joke about it all the time, about dumb jocks. and yeah. Listen, to be able to not just play the game but understand mm -hmm. the game at that high of a level, you have to have some intelligence. You have to be oh, yeah. an intelligent it's, person. Yeah. It's just, it's great how they show this, and it's great how they show, again, the, to your point, there's a difference between overall intelligence and being intelligent at your job. Yeah. And I've known fucking idiots in all walks of life that have been fantastic in their job. <laughs> they know their one fucking goal and their one job. And that's, that's the only thing they know. But yep. buddy, they know all of it. Yes, absolutely. And Alvin is a great example of that. And, and after this is when you get the, the fumble scene in the classroom where Omar falls yep. asleep and they go tumbling down the, the lecture hall. <laughs> Probably because they were talking about the Punic Wars with him too. <laughs> In, it was in math zero they're talking about the punic wars like right what university Al do you go to <laughs> you have to use long division to understand the battle of troy after this is when the coaches release the starting lineup you get the latimer scene where he says starting defense place at the table what? and then starts smashing his head through fucking the and windows that's what's crazy because I realized this when he starts going through that scene, because obviously it's such a famous scene. Yes. We're just now at the end of camp. Yes. They have yet to play a fucking game. Yep. Yeah. Very impressive by the director, because they did that very smoothly. Like, you're taking up a lot of time building up a and lot you, of uh, backstory that necessarily doesn't play. And, yeah. And we're, I mean, we're almost three quarters of the way through the movie at this point. Yeah. And you're like, well, are they going to play a game? And normally you would say like, this is a slow burn, but it's just like, everything's packed with stuff all the way up through this. Yeah. When the season starts and, and back to the head smashing scene. Now that I know it's real, like that's a true story. Yeah. Like that came from somewhere when at first, when I first saw it, I was like, come, I mean, oh, this is over the top. It's a bit much like, come on. Right. And now I'm like, oh shit, I guess that did happen. So, but there's it, it a gets... lot of scenes in this movie that are exactly, I used to think, even up till the, recently watching it, this movie's over the top and is kind of bullshit. Yeah. However, I am not athlete. So when athletes talk, I listen. 
Yes. And every athlete who is in a like high level has said this is one of the most accurate football movies ever made. Yes. That's when I'm just like, okay, whatever's happening in the movie, I'm taking a little bit, like five percent movie hyper hyperbole. The rest of it, yeah. it's all real. <clears throat> so this is where when you're talking about <laughs> hyperbole and and getting a little overblown. Um, because we start now we start getting into the season into the games. Yes. I'm convinced now that, like you said, 95% of this movie is, is pretty true to life. The 5% that's not true to life is the walking around and talking as the quarterback goes down to snap the football. You didn't think I was gonna find you, did you? I'm gonna bust your gut open and watch you die. Whoever wrote the shit talking piece of this. Yes. is is phenomenal except but, for the offensive lineman the yeah. offensive lineman was just like oh my god excuse me my dogies just reached the end zone and i gotta do some celebrating again as awesome as all the shit talk is this isn't a thing you might get a little banter here and there before the play after the play but especially while they're running too hot big boy oh! Listen, you got enough shit going on during the game that you're not like screaming, you know, whatever, as you're chasing after, like, I'm gonna get you, motherfucker. <laughs> like, nobody's doing that. And when you have like the there's the one scene later when they're playing Michigan, Alvin is talking to the quarterback. And the quarterback goes into blue 34, blue 32. He would have gotten a fucking penalty for a delay of game for as long as Alvin Mack was talking to him and he was trying to audible. Blue 30! Get that fucking money to up. Left the blood to do the time. Check, yeah. check, you little check, bastard. Check. Like 40 year old Peyton Manning just frozen. Omaha! Omaha! Peyton's Omaha! right side. They did do they did do a good job here because you go through the season, you have successful season, you have parties, the the victory parties, and you have the whole struggle with Omar, the other running back, and Autumn and her father. Like there's that whole story. You have uh Latimer who finally gets busted. He doesn't even get busted for steroids, he gets busted for sexual assault. But her dad, the chick's dad is a booster. So he's not going to press charges because he doesn't want to hurt the program. And he's not exactly happy about all this, but he doesn't want to hurt the program. That was gross. And then you have Joe who gets arrested for drunk driving and kicking the shit out of a townie at one of the bars who's talking yeah. shit to him. And he's got to go to rehab so those charges don't get brought up and the program doesn't get in trouble. Yeah. So you have no more apps at the bar where, he's, where he gets in the assault. Yeah, Omar Epps has the best lines where he says, "I feel like an ink spot in a bowl of milk, man. Let's get out of here." Such yeah. a great line. And for for the eighteen year old freshman, he's like the smartest dude on the team. Like he's always like the one that's like, "Yeah, we got to get yeah. the fuck out of here." Like he indubitably doesn't know how to use words. <laughs> I'll be number twenty, but we're indubitably gonna be number one. But he he knows uh, <laughs> how to get the fuck out of a bad situation. <laughs> Listen, he picks a word out of the day. His memorization skills by themselves are fantastic because I don't even know all the different words he used during this, but he memorized them all out of the dictionary. Mendacious, pejorative, antithetical, commensurate. There is a litany of words that he uses so fucking incorrectly here. And I love when Halle Berry's like, yo. Pretending to be smart is not the same thing as being educated. It's just a con that makes you sound stupid. Bobby Collins, the backup quarterback, gets thrown out as well as the coach's daughter because he's banging her. She was taking a test for him, so they both get expelled. He gets thrown out of, out of, coll or out of college and off the team, and now yeah. they actually need him. And I'm like, you don't have another quarterback on the roster? But Yeah, that okay. was short-sighted in and of itself, coach. Like, exactly. You've been all about the program, and I get it, your daughter's involved. But also, as they say at Bobby Collins' trial, Nobody's talking about getting this girl back in school. Yes. You exactly. let her fucking but, walk to Junko. So you're yeah. going to do this now? But they go, this is one of my favorite scenes in the movie when they go to the reinstatement hearing because James Conn does a, such a good job 
because they're going back and forth. He's not saying much because he hates the kid, but he's got to do it because he needs a quarterback. And he's very meek during this whole back and forth. And then you have the, the bow tie dude who's like, it's an institute of higher learning. This isn't a football vocational school. And James Kahn gives the line here. But when was the last time 80,000 people showed up to see a kid do a damn chemistry experiment? Why don't you stick the bow tie up your ass? Gentlemen, please. And I'm like, the bow tie up your ass line was the best part. And what's funny is I watched that this morning and went, oh, Armando loves that line. Dude, it was a very Godfather line. Yes. To, to, to this movie. <laughs> like, he went full Sonny Corleone right there. What are you going to do? Nice college boy, huh? You got to get up close like this. But bing, you blow their brains all over your nice Cyber League suit. And it was worth it. Oh, it was absolutely worth it. But we get to the end here. You know, Joe goes through to rehab. Latimer goes on his little injured reserve deal. And then Mac gets hurt at the Iowa game. And yep. he breaks his leg. And this is a couple of things I didn't like about this, right? One, the hospital scene was yeah. incredibly sad. I don't remember it being as sad, and maybe I'm just more emotional in my older age. Yeah. I was super depressed during that scene. I'm never, I'm never gonna play again, am I? That scene was fantastic. That was so yes. well acted. Mm -hmm. uh, him not being able to even spit out the words that he's never gonna play football again. Yeah. James Caan actually having that moment of humanity and telling him, like, you're the best fucking football player, like the de yeah. defensive player I've ever seen. It was yeah. just such a good, raw, real scene. I yeah. loved it. And I, I just hate that they did him dirty like this because we've all seen, even back then in 93, technology and, and medicine isn't what it, it wasn't what it is now. But he broke his leg. Yeah, he's coming back. I mean, he's coming back. He's going to the draft. Like he's he's getting he's going to the pros for at least a year or two to see if he could play. I hate Dude, that they did him. I just hate that they did him that dirty there. Thirty six year old Alex Smith shattered his goddamn leg. Yes, and his he bones were dust. Football game this, he played a lot of football games this year for the exactly. Washington football team. Yes. So I think Alvin Mack gonna be I. Right. Yeah, I think so. And then you have Latimer who kicks the juice. This is his first game back. He gets run over by a running back and they lose the game. And he's like, oh, well, I guess I'm not strong enough to tackle this guy. So now I'm back on the juice and here's roids in my ass. And then it goes to the final game of the season where now the coach is like, I'm going to piss test you. You're going to piss in front of me. None of this, you know, yeah. close the stall door. And this is where Latimer gets an oil change where it's the tube up his shorts and they're replacing the year. I didn't know. First of all, back then I was like, that's a thing. I didn't even know that was a thing. Like for, for a roadie of Metallica to know that kind of science, <laughs> suck out bad urine, put in good urine. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. Call it an oil change. So yeah. he gets, he gets back on the roids. They go to this last game and it's to win the conference championship. And you think it's going to be like, Joe's back and everything, but the game goes like the season did. The first half sucks ass. Yep. Uh, Bobby Collins is still playing because apparently Joe forgets how to play football. Four weeks He's in rehab. Rusty. He's throwing every single cross route into the goddamn dirt. <laughs> I have exactly zero skill in the game of football. Yes. And I can complete that fucking pass. I can, I can make a touch a receiver. I can understand if he's throwing it behind him or overthrowing him exactly. or whatever. He's dirting these. He's throwing worm burners at everybody. <laughs> like, everybody. Like he totally forgot how to play the game. So they, they come back at the end. They have one drive to win the game. They take the ball down. They score. The, I hate when football movies or any sports movies go down to the last play and the last play takes 15 minutes to run. And it so takes I was 15 like, minutes to run, and literally everything that can possibly happen in that play happens. Yes. This motherfucker is running around, <laughs> pump fake fumble, picks it up, runs around again. Jefferson has time to have a conversation in the end zone with the defensive back, like, uh, see ya. Because apparently, <laughs> Eastern State University doesn't believe in wide receivers. 
There's not a fucking pass completed to anybody there's but the two one. running backs. There's there's one touchdown thrown at the beginning of this game. It's 88, Fleet Ward, first game, first touchdown. That's it. You don't see that fucker the rest of the season. Yep. Good but, game, kid. Beat so it. The, the funny thing is, and going back to the 95-5 rule of this movie, I thought this was part of the five, which it technically yeah. is, the writing of it. But the the... In this article in ESPN, the director's talking about this. They basically, to save money on a lot of this shit, they would film these football scenes in to get fans in at halftime of real games. So that, you know, you have the stands filled with people. And they basically had one shot to film this last scene of mm-hmm. the scramble. And, and it was literally supposed to be a scramble, jump out, throw the pass, touchdown, they win. As they're running it, the quarterback that they're using in place of Joe Kane in this was a real quarterback, I think, from South Carolina mm-hmm. and who played at uh, South Carolina. And as they're filming it, the fumble, all that shit that happens with the quarterback really happened during the take. The fumble right. it p- pops back up into his hands and the director, I guess, was like, I thought we were screwed. We got to wait another two, three weeks till they come back and play a home game to shoot this scene. Right. And it just so happened that he went to pump fake. The ball fumbled out. He picked it up. It was just a lucky bounce. He goes, and we just caught it all on film. So we said, fuck it. Let's throw it in the movie. <laughs> Hell yes. We're at the end of this movie. Here's, here's the thing. We always talk about getting what you want, people getting what they deserve, and and all that stuff Mm -hmm. in these movies. Everybody in this movie literally gets everything they want, except for the one character that I actually liked in this movie, in Alvin. His football career's over, he gets to live in a shack in Missouri for the rest of his life or whatever, and you have Joe, who gets cleaned up, right, from rehab, Mm -hmm. gets the girl, Looks like he's enjoying football again and everything's good. You have Omar Epps, who looks like he's taking school seriously and he's doing better in school. He gets the girl. He gets the respect of the father. You you have the coach who has a winning season and now he gets to go recruit bigger players. You even have Latimer, who started juicing again, so he had a great game. And he's probably going to get drafted to the NFL next season. And then you have Alvin. It's like, fuck you, bitch. Your career's over. Not only is your career over, you're shit but poor and don't know how to read. Fuck you, doughboy. I can read. See that shoe? Says Adidas. Maybe at best your tutor told you who won the Punic Wars. (laughs) Detroit Buffalo. Do I think this movie still stands the test of time? Yes. Because yes. this movie was entertaining AF from beginning mm-hmm. to end. I, I still dig it. Um, people that love football, that have played football, respect this movie. I love the hell out of this movie. Mm-hmm. The one thing, or the two things. Stop talking, you know, in the middle of the audibles. and no, Nobody does that. And can you have Alf, Alvin get healthy? And get drafted or something like something at the end where like there's a happier ending for everybody else gets what they want except for this asshole. Yeah, there's even like, Omar Epps and his rival squash their beef. Yes, and Alvin's just fuck. Alvin's got a pretty blue cast and no hope. Yes, that's what he's left with. Yeah, yeah, it's bullshit. Um, that is the one part I agree that I just I fucking hate. Yeah, but. The rest of the movie's good, man. It's a good movie. It's not It's not realistic in the sense that, again, all this is happening at every major college program every year, all at once. Yes. It's very abnormal. This is very sporadic behavior from players across the country. Yes. Uh, so as long as you understand that, it's a great movie. Probably. But that's all I got. You got anything else? No, sir. All right. Well, for Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews, and this was 1993's The Program. Starting defense. Place at the table. 